Well, hello, it's Mr. Volkman, and this is another flip video lesson for chapter 7.1. And this is for the second half of chapter 7.1, and we are looking at ancient Egypt. Specifically, when Egypt unified into one kingdom, and also looking at the daily life of ancient Egyptians. Remember, this is video is meant for educational purposes, so if there's anything you don't understand, or if you feel you forgot something, please make sure you re-watch any part of the video that you need to. Let's begin. Let's first talk about hieroglyphics. Now, when we learned about Mesopotamia, we learned about cuneiform and how they use that to record information and later stories about um, the Mesopotamian life. Ancient Egypt had the same thing, except they used hieroglyphics. Now, what are hieroglyphics? Well, first off, they started with symbols that represented ideas or objects, kind of like pictographs. If you wanted um, to represent a bird, you would draw a bird. Pretty simple. However, they later moved to something much like how we have with our alphabet, where they had symbols that represented sounds, much like this W right here represents a what sound. Eventually, they combined both, and what we have today is the example of those hieroglyphics that we see here and here. Symbols that represent ideas or objects, maybe like this represents a bird, and then you have symbols that represent sounds. Maybe this represents a sound. Maybe it's a ch sound. I'm just guessing. Now, in our country, in this day and age, pretty much everyone knows how to read and write with the different alphabets that are around this world. However, in ancient Egypt, few people could read and write hieroglyphics. And these people were scribes, specially trained people who could interact and use these symbols. Let's start now and talk about unified Egypt. Before Egypt actually became unified, early rulers were village chiefs, a lot like Sumer was, for example, in ancient Mesopotamia. And just like in ancient Mesopotamia, you soon had the more powerful village chiefs taking over the villages that weren't so powerful. Eventually, in 4000 BC, you ended up having two kingdoms. You had Upper Egypt in the southern part of Egypt, and you had Lower Egypt in the northern part. Now the reason why Lower Egypt is in the northern part and Upper Egypt is in the southern part is because of the way the Nile River flows. Now the Nile River was the most important river in Egypt, and the Nile River flowed from the mountains in the south to the Mediterranean Sea in the north. So it actually looks like it's flowing backwards. Thus, if you're in Lower Egypt, you're gonna say, oh, Upper Egypt's there, because that's the way the Nile River was flowing. It was flowing from here, up, down, to here. Now in 3100 BC, a guy or a gentleman by the name of Narmer unified both Upper and Lower Egypt. And to show his power over both kingdoms, he wore a double crown. One crown to signify his control of Upper Egypt. One crown to signify his control of Lower Egypt. So it's kind of a, a tangible, a physical way to show that, hey, I'm in charge of both. Now, after Narmer went on to his reward, various members of his family continued to rule after him. Now, throughout chapter seven, um, we're gonna learn about three main Egyptian dynastic groups. And that's kind of how historians group the various dynasties that ruled ancient Egypt. And they're really original names. You first had the early kingdom, the middle kingdom, and the new kingdom. I know, pretty like awesome names. It's like, whoa, there's no way I could have thought of those names. Great job, historians. In this flip video, just briefly, very briefly, discussing early Egyptian life. Now again, a lot like Mesopotamia, we had social classes. We had really, really important people 
and the people that weren't very important. Now there were kind of five main groups of people in ancient Egypt and we can split those five groups into three social classes. First we had the upper class and the graphic I found actually has six. The textbook shows five groups so you do what you can do. Now the upper class was made up you know of Pharaoh who was the king followed by you had priests, nobles, and you also had government officials. They were the most important groups of people in ancient Egypt. They helped to run everything. The middle class was made up of merchants, scribes, artisans, and soldiers. So this was the middle class. This was like the class kind of in the middle. They weren't the most important, but they also weren't the least important. Finally, the lower class the grunts, made up of the farmers, unskilled workers, and slaves. These were definitely seen as the lower part of Egyptian life. Now within Egyptian life, in the home, real again, real brief, fathers were seen as the head of the household. They were the leaders. However, that's not to say women didn't have rights. Actually, women in Egypt, as you will learn, had more rights than other civilizations around them. Finally, kids didn't necessarily go to school. However, they were taught specific trades. So maybe you were taught to be a weaver or you were taught, like we discussed earlier, to be a scribe. Well, you will read more about ancient Egypt life and how Egypt was unified in the textbook and through various um, worksheets. Please make sure you go to Emoto and check out the assignment you have to do before class starts. Thank you and I will see you in class later.